But next is, don't go on the pill just because, oh, I've mixed up my little things. Don't go on the pill just because your friends are going on the pill. Like, I think I went on the pill at 15. I, I literally didn't have a reason for it. Like, I, I really can't remember. I don't think, I don't think I had very bad spots. I, I wasn't in a relationship. I think it was literally because everyone else was going on it. For all that time, I was just, was just on it. It actually did give me really bad acne. It made me feel really crap. But I just didn't want my period. I was so against having a period. Like it just seemed like such an inconvenience. I don't even think it was even irregular. I think I just didn't like the idea of it. It maybe was a bit irregular at the start because I just started. But I literally never gave it a chance. Like I didn't like give it a chance to track it or anything like that. I just wanted to go straight onto the pill. Now I think about all those years that affected my hormones. Like now I'm not on it and it's just so nice. And it just, it's quite empowering just like knowing your own body and like when your periods come and your period's such a good barometer of like your actual health as well. So to actually be able to track it, like if you did something like natural cycles or just like a diary and tracking your period, it's such a good way to know how your body's doing. And also it might be masking something. So I think a lot of women now are maybe on the pill like during like their twenties because they just don't wanna get pregnant. They're so terrified of getting pregnant. Actually, it's actually very hard for us to get pregnant. The chances are so low, which again, I've probably realized later in life, didn't know that at the time, I just thought if I had sex, I'd probably get pregnant. It's just little things like that. It's just the education uh, involved. Like, you know, no one ever came round to my school and was just like, these are your options when you're starting being sexually active. You can do this, you can do this, you can do this. I mean, like natural cycles wasn't about or anything like that, but it just, I just don't think I ever really had that chat. But now, you know, a lot of us, are maybe, had been made by on the pill, masking our symptoms. We come off the pill wanting to have kids. And it's like, we've been hiding things like maybe PCOS or endometriosis, ad adenomyosis, like all these kind of conditions that can maybe be masked by the pill that we don't know about until we actually want to have kids. So I think it's just good to, and this kind of ties into my, ne my next point is like thinking about fertility and like, not like you want to be maybe necessarily freezing your eggs in your twenties, but just so you're a bit of aware I was, I was just never aware and I was never really thinking about that. I think I just always thought, I'll probably meet someone in my 20s and have a baby. I'm like 33 now, so it is something I'm thinking about. I've actually just signed, ordered the fertility test, so I just think like knowledge is power. If you know about it, like I never would have thought to have got checked. I would have never thought to get my my egg levels counted, my, my MH levels, you know, checking how many eggs you've got left, like counted and things like that. Just even at an earlier age, just to be aware because if you're aware of this thing, then maybe you've got the foresight then to say, freeze your eggs or something like that. If you're in your twenties, it's only maybe later. Now we're all leaving like having babies later that you're starting thinking about that. And I think just more awareness about our reproductive system and our fertility and our periods is good. Like I will do a series on that. So um, if you want me to do something like that, then let me know. But I was thinking of doing like, you know, period power, that kind of book and stuff like that. And Dr. Hazel is really good at stuff like this, like with, um, female health and things like that. So I'll put her link or IG stuff here. So she's really good if you're interested in that. Yeah, so I just think being more aware of that sort of thing too. And that goes into my next point, which is go for your smear and check your breasts. Checking your breasts is so important. Like I just recently discovered that your breast can be skin texture. It doesn't have to be a lump if it's an indicator of breast cancer. So checking the, just the texture of your skin is another symptom. I remember seeing this like piece on the news and like they had like maybe like 20 women who had breast cancer and they asked the women, which one of you's had a lump? And maybe like three of them put their hand up. All the rest, it was different symptoms, whether like the shape of their breast had changed, whether their nipple color had changed. So there's like loads of other symptoms. So just being aware of that when you're checking girls. And guys, and guys can affect guys too. Okay, I've lost the pot with where I'm at. I put blusher on, I put some, I love blush, right? So I went in with some other matte stuff, Warm Soul Mineralized Blush. And like I said, I'm using like the same brush at the moment for everything. I know I'm an animal, I need to get a new brush. I just haven't got around to it. So yeah, makeup artist will be rolling around, just being like, what on earth is this girl doing? But I, like I said, I don't know what I'm doing. Next is some people are just gonna be mean to you just because it makes them feel powerful. They are maybe just jealous. And I know that sounds like it's such a cliche thing to say. My mom used to say that to me all the time. It's just because they're jealous. I'm like, jealous of what? I just couldn't really get my head around it at the time. Like it just felt like so unreasonable that they were being mean. People are just trying to put you down because of how insecure they are. It's just a mirror on them. They're projecting their insecurities onto you. At the time it just feels a bit shit, but 
it's kind of not really your problem, it's like their thing. There's a phrase that like, it's like, you could be the juiciest peach in the room, but someone will just not like peaches. So it's like, you just can't win. So I think the sooner you kind of like think, people are just gonna be like that, some people are just mean, or are just gonna say things to put you down, and it's just them, and it's just a reflection on them, it's nothing to do with you. Right, where am I? Where am I at? Okay, I'm gonna do eyes. And like sometimes I just literally do really cheap. I just put a bit of my bronzer on my eyes. Just very easy. So next is just get better at budgeting. Like I just wish that I, I mean, I hate spreadsheets. Like I've, I've got to think about them, but I'm getting better. And like, I would love just to be that organized person who loves spreadsheets, but I'm, I just find it difficult. But I've realized now how much better it makes my life when I do spreadsheets, when I like track my finances. Just getting good at budgeting early, I think is the key. Like having a good financial, I don't know, diet, financial like kind of a foundation is really good. And again, there's like so many books on that, like Rich Dad, Poor Dad, there's just so many out there. I've actually um, signed up to Female Invest and they do like webinars and they do, they've got like a, a market update like every, every week and stuff, like what's going on in the financial market and things like that. So like if you're thinking about investing savings like I would just get into that all so much earlier like investing as well like not not necessarily like Bitcoin and stuff like that because I just I don't know I mean I don't really understand all that stuff and to me it seems a little bit like gambling because I just don't know what I'm doing but you know just to just to get like more savvy about investing like I think investing for the long game is a really good thing to do you know not that you're gonna touch it for like five ten years just to have like a money pot growing I think is such a good idea so I wish I got into that kind of stuff sooner and next is we're on 20 now so next is it doesn't matter what dress size or trouser size or whatever you are, no one's gonna see the tag. I used to get so hung up at school about being like a size eight or a size 10 or not jump into a size 12, like if it didn't fit my hips, like, you know, I would just, I wouldn't buy it because <laughs> it was a, like a bigger size than what I was used to, which is just ridiculous because like, one, companies all have different sizes and two, no one's gonna see the tag, three, it really doesn't matter. As long as you feel comfortable, it doesn't matter what flipping size the tag is. If it's a size XXXL or a size XXXX small, it just doesn't matter. It just, all that matters is as if you feel comfortable wearing it. I just used to get so hung up on that. Like if I went shopping with friends, I'd literally put things back if I was not the size that I thought I should be. So, oh gosh, I mean, it's just ridiculous when you think about it. So it doesn't matter, just feel comfortable in the skin you're in and the clothes you're in. And I think confidence is key. So if you feel good in it, it's gonna look good on you. If you like get something that's too small and then you're constantly like pulling at it and stuff, you draw attention to it and then it doesn't make you feel nice and people then are looking at you because you're constantly like pulling at your clothes. But otherwise, no one cares. And next is, well, for me, my school, I literally don't think we learnt grammar. <laughs> like, so I don't know what happened there. Like, I don't know if I was off that period of time at school, but most of my friends feel the same, so I don't know what happened with the curriculum or whatever, but I have to use Grammarly all the time just because I, I just don't know what, like where an apostrophe, where a semicolon, colon goes. I look up, look it up all the time. Not everyone understands grammar. That's another life lesson I've learned. There seems to be people in my year group. And next is friends will come and go. You know, there's a phrase, Friends are for, you get friends for a reason, friends for a season, or friends for a lifetime. I think that's very true. It's really hard to lose a friend. And I feel like losing a friendship doesn't have as much onus as like a breakup, but like a friendship breakup can be really, really hard as well. You know, some, some are there for a period of time, some are there for a lifetime. And it can be really hard when friendships kind of fizzle out or, you know, something happens and it doesn't work out, but the good ones will stand the test of time or people will come into your life who are always meant to come into your life. It can be really nice, you know, finding those friendships that you maybe haven't seen them for ages. It's like you've never, never not been with them. You can just pick up where you left off and those are the really special friendships. Which kind of brings me on to the next one, which is, right, mascara, we're on mascara now. The Max Factor Masterpiece. So if you remember Memoirs of a Geisha, okay. <laughs> Max Factor Masterpiece. Um, you know, if you remember Memoirs of a Geisha, that was my favorite book. 
and the geisha from that book was the advert for this and i think that's part of the reason why i've just always used this mascara but next is right don't take your friends for granted so i remember being at uni and we would meet up in the refectory for lunch every day we'd have the chats every other day we would study we'd go out pretty much at the weekends those days were just so lovely seeing your friends every single day i think you take it for granted. Just don't take that time for granted when you're at uni seeing your pals because it's just so special because when you leave uni and people like move, have kids, get partners, husbands, whatever, it just changes and it's so hard to keep in touch. And literally it takes like weddings or hen do's for you all to get together. It was just such a special time and I, I definitely took it for granted. I just really miss seeing my friends all the time. And then that takes me on to the, the next point, which sounds a bit morbid, but mortality. I really feel time's passing by. You know, when I do see my friends, part of, there's like a little thought in my head, it's like, I wonder how many times we'll see each other. Like, especially friends who don't live that close. And then I know it's quite a sad thing to think, but it just makes me really, really then appreciate when I'm with them and like feel, try and be really present and also just like hug them. When I hug them, I really mean it. Or, and it's the same like with my family, even though I see my like family obviously a bit more regularly, it's just like everyone's getting older and you just don't know how much time we've got left. And yeah, I know that sounds like a bit sad and a little bit depressing, but I actually also just think it makes you really just appreciate who is in your life at the moment and just makes you think you just don't know what's around the corner so you know just really love your loved ones just really hug them when you hug them really be present when they're there because yeah we just don't know we just don't know what's going to happen and next is just about vulnerability and again another book is daring greatly by Brene brown and it's such a good book sorry i'm totally going off camera here when i'm doing my mascara but i can definitely not do it in there so Brene brown uh daring greatly and it is all about vulnerability and how vulnerability is so important. Like vulnerability as parents, as teachers, as leaders, in a relationship, in friendships. Because if you're vulnerable, it really opens the space up for others to be vulnerable. And that's how like the trust in relationships, I think, just gets deeper. It's because you've allowed yourself to be vulnerable and it allows someone else to be vulnerable. It's like a ripple effect. That book is just so good. I would thoroughly recommend. It's probably one of my favorite books, Daring Greatly. I will do a review on that at one point but that is like probably one of my all time favorite books. I just feel like everyone should read that book. And I just think if you're vulnerable, like some people might, maybe they just think it's a bit too much, but the people who are gonna be your people will take that vulnerability and like hold it. Some people maybe, maybe they're like, oh, it's a bit TMI, it's a bit too much or whatever then they're just not your people, you know? So I just think vulnerability though is a really good thing to strengthen relationships. And next is, this is kind of, I kind of realized this at school, but I still apl apply this now. Is if you don't know the answer, then someone else won't know the answer too. You know, if I'm ever at like peer, th peer review things or anything like that, I just remember like being at school terrified to put my hand up and then I was just like, I bet someone else doesn't know it. It was true, like a lot of people didn't know the answer to that question either. And I've just learned from school, like it's okay to ask the question because you're 100% not gonna be the only person thinking that. So you've probably done someone a favor who's just a bit too shy to ask that question. So I think you don't know, I, I don't think there's a, a silly question. Like I think you are not the only one thinking that. So just ask the question if you're stuck or if you're unsure. And next is be kind, because you just don't know who needs it. Like a little story for this, I've got a couple of stories for this, but I remember at school, there was a boy who was in a wheelchair and he was so incredibly shy. And I would sit beside him and I would just jabber away to him. <laughs> Some days I was like, at one point I was like, maybe I should stop chatting to him too much because he seems to be a bit uncomfortable. And I would just like, I don't even know what I would chat about. Like, I think I would just jibber jabber. And then years later, put up this post on Facebook and said that, how kind I've been to him, how I'd always, I'm gonna feel like emotional saying that, but how kind I've been to him and how he always appreciated that I'd always been friendly and always chatted to him at every lesson. It's just funny because all those years later, he remembers that. Whereas I remember at the time thinking, maybe, maybe I'm just a bit too much and maybe I'm just like, you know, maybe I'm making him a bit uncomfortable, you know, maybe I should stop chatting to him all the time like because he just seems because he was just so incredibly shy but he actually really appreciated that kindness and it was just such a nice 
thing for him to say like years later and it just it just really made me think like you just don't know that little bit of kindness that you give someone how much how important it is to them for example like i had this was like the first day back after lockdown i was going to work and i was up a height like i was so stressed I cried like the whole way to work. Like, I was just terrified, especially like in the profession that I am. Like optometry, we're so close to patients. So I was just terrified of bringing something back and killing my dad. Like, so I was just so scared. I went to get lunch that day and I, I, my purse was at the bottom of my bag and I was in a rush to like get to work. I started like unloading my bag and uh, the woman at the, the counter was like, oh, don't worry love, like it's, like 50 pence is fine, like it's okay. And I honestly nearly burst into tears because I was like, that is so kind. She was just like, I'm not having you like unload all your bag. Like, you know, don't worry about it, like it's fine. It was just such a simple little act of kindness that I just absolutely needed that day. And it was just so, so nice. I actually went back a few days later and like tried to give her chocolates, but she wasn't there. So I just left them. I've not actually seen her again since, but yeah, it just, little things like that can just make, can just be what someone needs on that day. You just don't know how it can impact someone. So yeah, just try and always be kind if you can. And that was got to be this. I've tried a lot of brow gel because mine are unruly. This stuff actually, I think, is quite good value and it is one of the better ones. So then I go in with like my wee spoolie and just like flatten it down just so it's not going anywhere. Because I like the, oh, now I've just smudged it. I like the kind of wolfy, surprised owl look. I like them looking quite upright. Okay, we're getting there, guys. Next is. Prioritize sleep. So if you've read Why We Sleep, such a good book, Matthew Walker. Don't read it in the car though, because, uh, in, in, no, don't listen to it in Audible in the car, because the narrator's voice is so dreamy. Dreamy isn't actually one, I just wanted to dream. Like it was putting me to sleep. He starts off the book like, so normally I would be offended if you fell asleep, but because this is a sleeping book, I would actually be delighted. His voice is literally like that the whole time and it does, like my eyes were just getting heavy. I couldn't listen to it going to work, but it's such an interesting book. We just neglect sleep considering it's free. Like imagine if I said to you, right, I'm gonna give you this pill and it's got hardly pretty much no side effects. I mean, I guess you can oversleep, but pretty much no side effects. It'll increase your longevity. It'll increase your performance in sports. It'll increase your concentration. It'll improve your relationships. It'll improve your sex. It will make you look healthier and younger and it'll make you happier and it will fight off diseases. You just have to take this pill. I think everyone would be jumping at that pill if they could take it daily. But the fact that that pill is just sleep, we just neglect it. We put it off, we get on our phones. I'm so guilty of this. Getting on my phone just before bed, looking up dumb stuff on Amazon, not prioritizing sleep when it's got all those benefits. Prioritize sleep, people. Let's, let's try and get better at the sleep. And read that book, it's very good. And lastly, we made it to 30. This is an hour long, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna have to put this in two parts because I think a lot of it is me just trying to figure out what I'm doing next with my makeup as well. Well, that was the, I'm so bad at this. That was the Anastasia Beverly Hills dip brow pomade. Brow pomade, I'm just so <laughs> Right, I'll just, I don't know, I'll, if you want to know, I can, uh, write a little thing in the description or something. Um, but that was dip brown, pomade, and medium brown. And this stuff lasts for ages. I think I think my eyebrows are probably gonna go gray before I finish this. It's, yeah, you don't need much. Next is therapy and self-development. So like self-help, I think gets a bad rep, everyone. Well, I personally felt therapy and self-help, you would have to be like having a mental breakdown or going through something like very traumatic, like a, a divorce or something like that to get therapy or to read those sort of books. And I think partly, you know, there's a scene in Sex and the City where Charlotte's looking for a self-help book and everyone around her is like breaking down crying. Like I don't feel that like promotes self-development very well, but also therapy, like I feel like it gets such a bad rap. You know, people going to therapy are like, oh right, you're going to therapy. All right, okay, geez. I don't know why. I just don't know why I get such a bad rep because it's actually so good. Like you don't have to be in a really bad place or going through anything traumatic. You can just read self-development books, go to therapy just to get better at life. You know, you can learn tools. You can just understand yourself better. You know, why aren't, those are all good things. So I would 100% recommend therapy and just 
reading more self-development books, but particularly therapy. I think therapy is so good. It can just improve your life so much. Just help you understand why you do things because you might not know why you do particular things or have particular behaviors, but an outsider who's trained can enlighten you on that stuff and then it could just make your life potentially so much better, your relationships so much better. I would say therapy is my last talking point. So now I'm just doing a bit of eyeliner. Uh, eyeliner, yeah. I'm really good at makeup, putting eyeliner on my lips. This is MAC, all the writing's come off it. Oh wait, no, it hasn't. It is, I like this one. This is Quark. So I saw, I love Rochelle Hume's makeup. So just very like natural, like I'm not really wearing makeup, but I am. I copied her. And just smudging that in and then go in with a little bit of lipstick. I don't know where my lipstick went. Right, I did have lipstick, but that's gone somewhere. So yeah, let me know if you like these videos. This is Honest Beauty again, and it's called Chestnut Crayon. The, the packaging on this isn't great, like the wee lid pops off, but it's just kind of like a very kind of nothingy color, but I just really like it. It's just very, very neutral. So yeah, let me know if you like this. If I've not garbled too much, I think I'll do it in two parts because it's gonna be such a long video otherwise. Maybe you got to know me a bit better as well. I've realized I've not done any kind of get to know me's yet because I actually find this kind of video very vulnerable. Like, it's actually really nice. It's just been like kind of getting ready and chatting with a friend. So so if you like it, let me know. I can maybe do more of these. I'd like to do a Q and A, but again, I've been like, ask me any questions no one cares but if you'd like a Q&A we can do something like that as well I can do like a skin video <laughs> if you want one but this has probably been abysmal so you might not want one like I do love skincare so I have tried quite a few bits so I could do like the recommendations things so I love watching those videos those are the sort of things that I watch on YouTube <laughs> need to not open my mouth when I do that so yeah 30 things I've learned in my 30s just some life lessons and it's actually been such a nice cathartic thing to do so you know it would be quite a nice journal prompt what do I wish I could tell my younger self because that's basically what I've done there is things I wish I could tell my younger self yeah it's just quite a nice thing to do so let me know what you think guys it's a wee bit different I know and take care bye